how does one um, like wake wake up that knowing that there is God that one should serve God because it seems like it, it's 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 a slip in us. We all know it, but some of us are just, we either forgot or we're not aware of it. And in different practices like yoga, Buddhism, you have a silent retreat, you have meditation, you have all these different kind of practices, but how do you wake that up, that knowing again? Through learning, that has been our secret. Torah. When you learn the Torah, it wakes you up. But the truth is, if you look a little closer, everybody is serving God. But sometimes it's the wrong God. You know, the, the people think serving God is such a religious activity. I'm not into religion, so what am I doing? It's not for me. You're doing it anyway. You are worshiping. Question is only who or what are you worshiping? Yeah. So worshiping God is not an unusual activity. It's a thing that most of us are doing all the time. Just a question of which God? Is it the God of Israel? or the God of politics, or the God of money, or the God of uh, narcissism, which God? But you are serving. You are worshiping something. Now, interesting definition. What does it mean to worship? To work for? That's to serve. Mm -hmm. what, what is it to worship? A mother looks at a baby and what, what she sees is absolute perfection. A father looks at a baby and thinks, how much is it going to cost me to put her through college? <laughs> <laughs> but a mother looks at a baby, there's only one thought in her mind, perfect. Perfect. It's in a complete awe. Yes. Why? Because it can't get better. It cannot get better. She'll go to college. She won't go to college. Doesn't matter. She's perfect. It can't get better. So when you look at something and you feel, wow, can't be better than this, that's called worship. We're all doing it. The question is only, what do you think is so perfect that it can't get better? Mm. The only thing that is truly that perfect is the creator. But everything in creation can get better. Everything can use a little improvement. For sure. So to worship anything besides God is a little foolish. It's like not looking deep enough because even that thing that you worship, someone created that thing. There's always one layer underneath or above. It's not a, it's not a, it's not a bad experience when a mother looks at a baby and worships the baby. That's a mother. That's not a vodazara. Mm -hmm. Or a man looks at his wife and just can't get better. That's good. <clears throat> It's sad if you never had that experience or a moment when everything is so right, everything is so good that you don't care if the world stops right now and stays this way forever because it doesn't need to get better. 
Mm. It's a heavenly moment. Absolutely. So serving God is simply a question of finding the right one. But you're not going to do anything different. Whether you're worshiping your your business, your profession, or whatever, or you're worshiping God, it's the same thing. You just have to find the right one. Who to worship, not whether you should worship. Because it's natural for us to worship. It's 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 an organic act that we do. Yeah. So it's really just fine-tuning the who. Exactly. Mm -hmm. Do you have any advice of how can one uh, allow more of God's light to pass through their beings, our beings? Okay. So God's light is not a feeling. That's a little too spiritual. That, that I don't know. Somebody says, I feel God. How do you know what you're feeling? <laughs> Maybe you're just in a good mood. How do you know you're feeling God? So let's let's not go into uh, into outer space where we're not sure exactly. You know? Yeah. Feeling God's light means what God wants matters to you. I want to eat on Yom Kippur. But God says no, so, so no. That's God's light. If I'm doing what he wants, then God has reached me. Somebody once asked the Rebbe, isn't my wife supposed to obey me? And the Rebbe said, you're supposed to behave in a way that your wife wants to obey you. Absolutely, <laughs> yes. So, if you can do what somebody else wants, rather than what you want, that's, that's goodness. So feeling God's light means what he wants matters to me. I want to obey him. Now you're motivated by God. That's called, that's called God's light. If you know there's a God, but you don't do anything different, then there's a God, but his light hasn't touched you. So it's it's tangible, you know, it's measurable. You know, did you do it or didn't you do it? Mm -hmm. If you like Shabbat candles, that's it. That's God's light. It's not yours. So it's not so mystical. Like, how would I ever know if I'm really thinking about God or... Uh, if you light Shabbos candles exactly at sunset or before sunset every Friday, this is not you, this is him. Why would you do it? Or if you did it, you would do it every night because you like candles. But only Friday? Uh -huh. That sounds like God's idea, not yours. Yeah. So how do you increase or build or cultivate that light? Or pour it out for others. Every mitzvah you do makes what God wants more interesting to you and more justified. Yes, I should do what he wants. So the best way to inspire a person is to get them to actually do a mitzvah. Tam u ur u. <laughs> you got to taste it. You can't just think about it. And to taste it means do it. Yeah. So every woman you know, every girl you know, should like Shabbos candles. 
then you'll see. You were saying that a woman who is not married should light only one candle, right? Because the second one is the husband. Okay. It's good to know. I never knew that before. And then we light an extra candle for every child that is born. So you have lots of light on, on Friday night at home. <laughs> 16. Wow. Brave, strong woman, wife. Wow. <laughs>